The most important thing in marathoning is not to look at it as 26.2 miles. Now, when I ran the New York City Marathon with Lance Armstrong a couple of years ago, he really wanted to break a three-hour marathon. And I picked him up at mile 10. Alberto Salazar had run the first 10, and I was only supposed to run the second 10, and then Al Garouge from Morocco was going to run the last six with him. And when I got to the 20-mile mark, um, the people at Nike asked me if I would stay with Lance because Al Garouge is a 1,500, 5,000 meter runner, so he runs really fast. And they were afraid he was going to lose Lance, and then Lance would be all by himself not knowing what to do. So I was sort of hanging on myself at that time, but I agreed to keep going. And at 22 miles, um, Lance really started to fall off the pace. And he was looking for every single mile marker. And at every single mile marker, he wanted water or a, a, a electrolyte drink and some, some uh, goo or uh, energy mix. And uh, you know, I, I have never seen somebody ingest so much food during the course of the <laughs> bags pinned to the inside of my shorts, but whatever he wanted, he got, and, and, um, but I knew he really had to pick up the pace, so I tried to take his mind off the mile markers, and I had him focusing more on the people in front of us, and I said, see the woman in the black shorts, let's go after her, see the man in the red hat, let's go after him, see the woman in the yellow singlet, and we moved ourselves through the crowd that way, with different focal points. And at about 25 miles, he thought he had it made in the shade. He thought he was well under the three-hour marathon. And I was still looking at my watch saying, this is going to be really, really tight. And what do you think had happened? He forgot about the point two at the end of 26. And that can make a big difference, especially in a marathon. So when you say, what's the toughest mile in the marathon, they're all tough. You shouldn't look at the mile markers. You should just run your own race and disregard the mile markers. Now, if you want to sort of cut the difference. If you think of 26 miles in your head, that's a long way to go. Why would anybody compete over a 26 mile distance? And if any of you have read Born to Run, they're more crazy than the marathoners, but um, those endurance athletes. But um, I break the marathon down into shorter distances, into shorter segments, like 10 miles, most marathoners will do 10 mile training runs. So if you run 10 miles, then you only have 16 miles left. And a lot of runners run 10K. So then I think of the next portion is this 10K, six miles. And then you only have 10 miles left. Well, we do 10 mile training runs all the time. So your marathon's behind you when you finish. And so rather than think of the daunting distance of 26 miles, break it down into the smaller distances. And I think once you get by mile 17, Mile 17, I think, is a crucial mile to put behind you. And after that, you can, you can cover the rest of the distance. It may not be easy and it may not be pretty, but once you get to mile 17, I think it's uh, a good sign.